Good afternoon, fellow heretics. Okay. I've got a bit of a story for you. This has to do with the Trinity, the so-called Trinity. I had someone bring something to my attention. Someone that reads the King James Version, which I hate, but there are a lot of people that like that version. It's got more errors and I don't even call them mistranslations. I think a lot of it was intentional. Traditional things passed down over the centuries from the Catholic Church. The Protestants carried a lot of that baggage over. Demonic baggage. So, someone that I know, they read the King James. They showed me 1 John 5, 7. 1 John 5, 7. And um, this individual is learning. I have showed them the concordant versions. And also I have tried to get them to look at some of the mainstream versions to compare. So they're doing this, and it's working. Um, it's a slow progress, but they're seeing things. But yesterday, they showed me this verse, and let me read it in the King James Version first. It says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So when this person showed me this, immediately I knew something was wrong. Now I hadn't read this in a while. Um, it's kind of hard to remember every Bible verse. So I'm looking at it. So I said, okay, let's pull out the concordant literal and take a look at it. So we pull out 1 John 5, 7. And this is what it says in the concordant version. Seeing that three there are that are testifying. That's it. So I'm looking at it. Okay. That's the drastic difference there. I trust the concordant version. I think A. Enoch was a genius. But what I do is, if I have questions, I'll go to online software like Bible Hub and check out some of the you know mainstream translations the ISV um, things like the New American Standard Version and strangely they all agreed with the concordant literal so now I'm really really perplexed I'm thinking this doesn't happen very often so in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, these words were added. But then I went to Young's literal translation, and he had all of these extra words in his translation. I was aware that Robert Young was a Trinitarian. What I wasn't aware of is that he would do what I think is dishonest and add something that is not in the original manuscripts. So, unfortunately, with this case, even with a literal translation, you will not get the truth because there's always some kind of bias. That's why, even with the concordant literal, Always check your sources. Anyway, I went online and I started looking up this matter. I'm like, what is going on here? I knew that something was added somewhere along the line. So they have a name for this verse and the clause.
that was added to it. It's called the comma Johannium. It's just the comma of John. This has been a hotly contested topic over the centuries. You see, for many hundreds of years, like during the Dark Ages, the Catholic Church had absolute power. They had all the information. They wouldn't let little peasants read anything. But then the printing press was invented, and that changed everything. And then hundreds of years later, here comes the Internet. So they couldn't hide this stuff anymore. For, for them, the, the absolute control is over. Okay. So I'm getting off track here. This little comma is not in the earliest manuscripts. The ones that every translation uses. It's not in there. This little clause was not mentioned by the so-called early church fathers. And I'm talking about people like Athanasius, who wrote the Athanasius Creed. The dude was like hardcore Trinitarian. By the way, if for fun you ever want to, you know look at someone contradict themselves 500 times in one statement, read the Athanasian Creed. It's absolutely insane. The traditions of men which make the word of God of no effect. The Latin Vulgate that was written by Jerome. There are early manuscripts of that that do not have the added words. So what happened is somewhere around the time in the fourth century, someone was copying. This was all these things were written on papyrus scrolls back then. And the scrolls went bad. So you had to get a copyist to make a new copy of it, and really their job was just to do it word for word. Well, apparently someone thought they were smarter than the Apostle John and said, well, you know, John, he really should have put the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost in heaven. And then even in verse 8, it adds, and there are three that bear witness on the earth. That phrase is not in the autographs in the oldest, okay, the oldest uh, manuscripts aren't the autographs, but they're the closest thing to it that we have. Well, those phrases are not in it. Well, this, it must have started with one person. They must have put a note on the side or something with these added Trinitarian phrases. And then the next person that copied it, because the papyrus goes bad, said, hey, maybe this person knew more than I did. Let me just uh, put it in the scriptures. And then it became tradition. I mean, what did they not see the warning at the end of Revelation, what John wrote? It's incredible, like, the lack of reverence. So, I have I look at the King James only people, and they're mostly like Baptists, and I'm always wondering why they cling to the King James so much. Well, this is sort of clarifying that for me right now. It's because the King James holds on to every tradition of men and it's actually traditions of demons. The newer translations are more correct because of the technology that God's given us. 
So they want their precious trinity. They want three gods. But they'll tell you that there's only one god. Once again, it's absolutely insane. All through the Old Testament it says there's one god. I think it's in Deuteronomy. So yes, the King James only people, they love their traditions more than the truth. And now I understand why they hold on to the King James. They, they call the new versions evil. That the, the, new, the new versions are from Satan. And I'll admit some of the new versions have um, some of the same crap in them that the King James has. But they've made improvements. And some of that's from pressure from people. To summarize what these copyists did and really what the Catholic Church as a whole did to this verse, I mean, this is just an example of what they did to everything. And in a higher relative sense, what Satan did to everything. There's an English historian named Edward Gibbon. He wrote this in 1776. Let me read it to you. And it just summarizes this whole topic here. Even the scriptures themselves were profaned by their rash and sacrilegious hands. The memorable text which asserts the unity of the three who bear witness in heaven, is condemned by the universal silence of the Orthodox Fathers, ancient versions, and authentic manuscripts. It was first alleged by the Catholic bishops, whom Huneric summoned to the Conference of Carthage. An allegorical interpretation, in the form, perhaps, of a marginal note, invaded the text of the Latin Bibles, which were renewed and corrected in a dark period of ten centuries. Edward Gibbon was not a believer. He was just a historian, so I think he summed it up well. They mutilated the truth. He didn't believe in the Bible or the scriptures. But, study to show yourself approved. Rightly cutting the word of truth. Yeah, I didn't expect that to happen yesterday. And I hadn't read that verse. I, I read through it maybe last year. That's probably because I haven't read the King James in so long that you have the concordant version, and um, you know you have all the nonsense cut out of it. It is disturbing, though, that someone would have the nerve to add to the scriptures. So, for anybody that reads the King James, um. I invite you to try at least another translation to compare it to and get a concordance, please. And you have these awesome tools on the internet to where you can actually go to the original language without some pompous religious teacher hanging over you. You can do it all on your own. We live in an incredible time. It's a, an age of information. So, anyways, I hope this helps somebody. And thanks for listening. And God bless you.